Hello again, and welcome to Interpreting Asia, Interpreting Europe. In this program, we are going to look at how liaison interpreters need to be aware of cross-cultural differences as they decipher what the speakers mean. In today's drama, we see that a European visitor and his Vietnamese host are concluding their meeting. Everything has gone very well, and there is a feeling of goodwill between them. But even with the very best of intentions, things can go wrong. Well, cheers. 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 Uh, 1948. So you are a lot older than me. Uh, yes, I, yes, I suppose I am. Đúng, tôi tin vậy. Ông sinh năm tí tuổi con chuột. So you are a rat. I'm a rat. I see. Bây giờ ông thích ăn món gì? Now, what would you like to eat? Mm, what do you got? Để tôi gọi mấy món ngon cho ông dùng thử nhé. Let me order okay. a couple of dishes for you to try. Ông Jack ạ, tôi là tuổi lợn. Mr. Jack, I am a pig. You're a pig? Well, you, you don't look like a pig to me. Nhưng trong bà không giống con lợn. Hay làm ăn đến đâu rồi? Trông có vẻ là làm ăn lớn đấy. So, how's business? By the side of you, it looks good. Actually, it hasn't been so good, but I'm hoping to do some good business deals in Vietnam. Keep my fingers crossed. So, what has gone wrong? Well, both the Vietnamese host and the European guest are insulting each other without realising it. Not only don't they speak each other's language, but they don't understand each other's culture. For example, à, thưa ông Jack, ông sinh năm nào ạ? À? So, Mr. Jack, what year were you born? Uh, 1948. Năm 48. Vậy ông hơn tuổi tôi nhiều lắm. So, you are a lot older than me. Uh, yes, I, yes, I suppose I am. Đúng, tôi tin vậy. À, ông sinh năm tí tuổi con chuột. So, you are a rat. I'm a rat. I see. In European culture, the zodiac signs say that you can be born in the month of Gemini or Scorpio, but there is no year of the pig or year of the rat. So naturally, the European guest feels insulted when he's called a rat. Clearly, the Vietnamese businesswoman has no wish to insult her guest, so the liaison interpreter should have conveyed the meaning of the speaker rather than translating the exact words. Perhaps if the interpreter had been more aware of the cultural differences, he might have said, you were born in the year of the rat. But there is more. So, how's business? By the side of you, it looks good. In many European countries, it is not considered polite to draw attention to physical appearance, or even to age, which they just did it can easily offend. So again, the interpreter could have been more subtle about his translation and explained to the guest that the Vietnamese host is not being impolite. But it is not just the Vietnamese accidentally giving offence. Look at the European's hand gesture here. Actually, it hasn't been so good, but I'm hoping to do some good business deals in Vietnam. Keep my fingers crossed. Physical gestures often mean different things in different cultures. I'm keeping my fingers crossed in British culture means I'm hoping for good luck. But unfortunately in Vietnamese culture it means something entirely different. So, interpreters need to know more than just two languages. They need to understand the cultures as well. Cultural awareness is, is quite a sensitive topic, uh, but it's nonetheless important. Uh, most people think that interpreters only deal with language. They don't. We are, if you like, a bridge between cultures, and that's what we should be. If it's just a question of finding one word in one language and an equivalent in another, the computer can do that much more quickly and much more efficiently than we can. It's not about that. 
It's more about getting a message from one culture to another. Yes. An interpreter is providing more than just language input. He is also acting as a bridge between cultures. The interpreter must convey the meanings which are carried in the culture to the other party. The interpreters are not only bringing the language from one, well, you could say, source language to a target language. But moreover, they need to understand the, la the languages, the cultures, the habits, even the peoples of both nations in order to well, be able to transfer the message. Cross-cultural awareness is the knowledge about cultural differences, is understanding of our own culture and familiarity with ways to relate to and work with people from other cultures. Interpreters' cross-cultural competence is a particular way of thinking, a sensitivity to cultural diversities, and a conscious effort to apply the awareness to the whole process of interpreting. It is a willingness to put oneself into the speaker and audience's shoes and an ability to act accordingly for the benefit of smooth communication. Liaison interpreting is so much more than language alone. It is about culture, it is about people's habits, and above all, it is about people. We are going to look now at some liaison interpreters working in different social and cultural contexts. This is uh, one of the eight sites, major sites in the museum. As you can see, this is a teapot, and this, this is called Heavenly Teapot, uh, which suggests that the water comes from heaven, and uh, in the Tianhu also, the Heavenly Teapot in China sounds very similar to uh, God's sand. So this has a, a good wish that everybody will have the luck sent by God and uh, will have happiness. And this is also my wish to all of you. Here is a scene from an English village festival. The youngest child in the school, so we find out who the youngest child in the school is, picks the name out of the hat. And so whosoever name is picked out, that's the person who is the May Queen. And then the other girls, who are also the year six girls, are what we call her attendants. So they sort of stand on her, either side of her, and support her, like bridesmaids really at a wedding. 因为是这是一个非常传统的节日我们选这个小王后的时候呢呃就这样是这么选的然后先是从这个小孩六岁的小孩中呢他们先把自己的资源然后呢把他们名字记下来我们再从中呢选就是出就是从出签的性质选定了
Okay, Buddhism. Later, when the Buddhists and a temple in China, into China, the people would like to. <laughs> That's what I call a uniform. He is a Morris dancer. Thank you. Can me introduce my so much details about Morris. So enjoy your dancing and the it's traditional at this time of the year to have May Day celebrations. But this goes back hundreds of years. Really. A historic Morris village in England, Albury. Hundreds. There was a village here in this part of Hertfordshire mentioned in the Doomsday Book, and as far back as 1291, there was a population here of about 75. It takes a lot of time to coordinate and contact people. Um, Ladies of the village community. A lot of these people come back every year, so they, you know, expect to come each year. Chúng tôi bắt đầu chuẩn bị cho cái này từ tháng 11 năm ngoái, và nói chung cũng có rất nhiều việc phải làm, và chúng tôi có rất nhiều việc như mời người nọ, mời người kia đủ khối các công việc với nhau. Thì có rất nhiều người người ta cứ năm. The drama we saw at the beginning of the program was based on Vietnamese speakers meeting English-speaking Westerners. Let's finish this program by looking at a short drama with a different set of cultural misunderstandings between Chinese and British business people. I'm very pleased that your trip has been so successful. Well, without your help, it would have been impossible. Not at all. It has been pleasure. You've been very kind, and your hospitality was wonderful. That's an interesting picture. Do you like it? Uh, I like the style. Is it contemporary? It was 30 or 40 years old. The artist Chen Xilin died recently. He was quite well known in the Chinese art circle. Ah, we don't have anything to compare with this in the West. My wife likes that type of painting. Anyway, I must go back to the hotel and uh, pack. It is my gift to you. I will have it sent to your hotel. Oh, I couldn't possibly accept such a gift. No, please. I insist. Oh, I feel very awkward about taking the painting. Well, I was just trying to be polite. You know, they wrapped it up and sent it to the hotel. I'll have to get it to the airport somehow, and then uh, try and get it through customs, I suppose. But, um, you know, just wonder whether I ought to leave it at the hotel. Well, I enjoyed that, and I hope you did too. Goodbye. <laughs>